morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello kids and welcome to season four and episode number 459 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryo Media Network. Boop, 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 boop. I get to do this again for two more weeks. Yay! <laughs> Today, recording day, is Friday. Thank God I am Friday, August 30th, 2024. Uh, so the next time we'll be speaking to each other will definitely be in September. I am your host, the eager beaver, pronouns he, him. Sorry, I got a little gravel in my throat. <clears> throat> hey, Mr. Beaver, eh? And with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A uh, big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss Fee Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. Uh, looks like it's going to be an overcast day here. Probably not completely gray, but overcast here at uh, the Beaver Lodge. <sighs> Mr. Grizzly. How's your mental health today, sir? Well, sir, I, I, uh, I dare say it's uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Um, I'm a little, hey. a little groggy. My uh, allergies are kicking my butt. The, uh, the dreaded ragweed season is well on underway, and mm-hmm. uh, it it takes its toll on me. It feels like I have a head cold for about you know about a month. So <laughs> starting now until probably Thanksgiving, I'll be uh, sounding and looking like this. So, yeah. 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 It is what it is. You live through it. You take your medication and uh, hopefully it helps, but it, it, it can only do so much. Mm. Uh, well, things are going well at this end. Um, I was uh, tired yesterday because uh, I think somewhere around uh, nine o'clock, if not a little earlier, um, I splayed out completely starfished on the bed. Well, and uh, I think somewhere in the evening, my uh, beaver sweetie came and pulled a blanket over me. And uh, I guess at another point later in the evening, if he decided he was going to bed, he saw I was still starfished and hadn't moved at all, like an inch in maybe like five hours. So he uh, decided to take the other bed and not to uh, disturb my sleep because he loves me. <laughs> uh so yeah i got a um about a really really solid solid six like, like starfish on my stomach in my clothes and that i woke up in the exact position i i splayed out so i did not move for whatever oh. hours at all so i was really zonked out and slept very solidly um now of course that means i I, i've been up and at him since 3 30 in the morning (laughs) 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> I know my whole clock is off. Fortunately, Paralympics are on. And yeah, even though we're not broadcasting until two, if you're watching uh, stuff on Jim, you can watch live. So um, followed a couple of things and and uh, prepared the morning show. And uh, and uh, oddly enough, Kits and Cubs, I have to say, um, there wasn't much to prepare because I think I think I can pretty safely say in uh, the three and something years we've been doing this, um, yesterday was literally the slowest news day on anything politics. Um, For the most part, yeah. I just Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we've been getting like... A, a, a metric shit ton of it <laughs> for pretty much every day for the longest time. But there's like even I politics, like I get a thing every day from them. That's like stuff to look at. Yeah. There's almost uh, nothing. Well, the only two things I've got right now are, are the uh, Supreme court of Canada saying they're not going to hear the ruling on uh, Maxime Bernier and, and um, uh, who was the other individual the name? Is uh, Brian, oh, Peckford. Uh, Brian Peckford. Uh, Brian Peckford um, wanting to uh, oppose any sort of vaccine mandate, and they're like, "No, we're not even going to hear the case." Yep. Uh, and you got to pay us for this. Basically, yes. we don't. We have no idea what that cost will be. They never release that. But yeah. no. Yes, we have. Um, yes, we. We. Uh, you. You so do not have a case that we're not going to hear it. But thank yeah. you. Yeah. Then there was <laughs> this tidbit from Pierre Polyev. Have you seen this clip? Uh, yeah. Part of me doesn't even want to show it because it's just the same old damn thing again. I know, but it's it's one of the things where I want to show it so people can understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know this person is and what this person does, and the reason I say that is because he wrote a formal letter to Jagmeet Singh, Jagmeet yes, Singh, asking him to end the, the coalition government. And and here he lies again. He lies about five times in this two minute clip. Let's count the lies. I'll, I'll pause it each time and say lie. Singh sold out workers to sign on to this costly coalition. Lie. He has voted to hike the carbon tax to 61 cents a liter for, for policies to double housing costs. Lie. The government has no control over housing costs. That's a half truth. And to tax food. Now Nor do we have any control over food costs. Taxation on food, yes, but carbon tax doesn't affect the cost of your food. And, this has been proven time and time again. And there has been no change to the taxation None. on your food. None. Zero. So there's like, what, three lies already? Well, two lies and a half truth. Now, why did he do it? He told us that if he became part of the government. <sighs> he already was part of the government, just not the sitting government. He is a member of parliament, but he's not a member of the Canadian government per se because he does not sit in the Liberal Party. He sits for the New Democratic Party. There is no coalition. It's a supply and confidence agreement. He'd bring down food prices. He did say that, but he can't do that. That was one of his promises. Did he succeed? Well, you don't actually have to ask me if he succeeded. Ask him. This is what he said about food prices last week. When you go into the grocery store, and you're buying your groceries, you're spending more than ever before, and you're leaving with less than ever before. Again, that is after two years of Jagmeet Singh joining the Liberal government. Jagmeet. Jagmeet, number one. Number two, he did not join the Liberal government, you lying, sniveling narcissist. So what's clear is that Singh did not join to bring down grocery prices or housing costs, both of which have skyrocketed since he joined this coalition. It's not a coalition. He joined with to keep Trudeau in power. He didn't join the Liberal government. He so didn't he join to keep... Pension. He also didn't join to keep Trudeau in power. Correct. Jagmeet Singh is trying to keep Trudeau in power so that he could get his pension. Says the man with twenty who had a gold-plated parachute pension, pension at, at 31. thirty-one. Yes, who's done nothing but live his entire life off the public teat. He has never, until he was elected leader. I mean, what, what has he done? He's done nothing his entire. We'll get that, we'll get to that later. Jagmeet Singh is trying to. 
Jagmeet. To delay the election until after February of next year so that he can qualify for a $2.2 million taxpayer-funded pension. That okay. you already have. He doesn't have to try to delay an election. He signed a supply and confidence agreement like two years ago or something yes. saying that he would keep the government, would not bring down the government on matters of confidence until the election. And he's always said that he doesn't have to remain in the deal, but not remaining in the deal does not mean he's necessarily also going to take down the government. Correct. Correct. And a lot of things that he's talking about are not things that were part of the deal. Correct. He could walk away from the supply and confidence agreement right now, and that will not affect the government. That no. won't. Because it's as simple as, a, as simple as it is, it's not a requirement to stay in power. No. He'll, the government, whenever they just have more legislation, will have to negotiate with at least one of the three other parties Correct. to get it across. So if the NDP doesn't want to dance on something, maybe the bloc will. If the conservatives might want to dance on a few things. You never know. Because they, I mean, they did on the, the anti-scab legislation, right? Mm -hmm. Surprisingly. Um, but that's all it means. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to, because the NDP on its own can't take down the government. They would no. need the help of the bloc. Because you know the conservatives are all in. Yeah. But the way that the seats are, are in the House right now, it's like the conservatives, if they want to bring down the government, they need to get both the bloc and the NDP to agree. We've got about uh, 37 seconds of this. Yeah. You've got to hear the rest of it because it's like, good God. That's why Canadians are calling him Sell Out Sing. No, he that's started, just you. That's just you. You did that. <laughs> and, I mean, My this isn't him selling out right now. No, no. message to Sell Out Sing is this. So let me get this correct. You call him Sellout Singh repeatedly in a press conference, then you write a letter asking him to... For a favor. <laughs> you, attract, you attract more bees with vinegar <laughs> and piss. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. Put the people ahead of your pension. Break the costly coalition with Trudeau to trigger a carbon tax election where Canadians can choose between the costly coalition of the NDP Liberals Not a coalition that tax your food It's also not a carbon tax It's no. a carbon regulatory recovery fee Yes This has been declared by the Supreme Court of Canada Yes so This guy can't even ugh. Finish your work Take your money double your housing cost, and unleash crime and chaos in your community. Lie. Or common sense conservatives. Complete lie. Total, utter. Who will ax the tax, build the homes, fix the budget, and stop the crime. Um, Say so, so uh, Mr. Noun Noun Verb Guy, or Verb Noun Noun Guy, I should say. All he is is three word slogans. Ax the tax, build the homes, stop the crime. How, how do they plan on doing any of those things? Yep. I would like to see a full statement on what their, uh, their ideology is and, and how they plan to implement all of those things. Because if he's going to reduce housing costs, that would mean he'd have to, what, nationalize housing? Because it's still part of the free market, as is groceries. So neither government can lower grocery prices. It doesn't matter who's sitting. You can't lower grocery prices. Unless you nationalize the grocers and, and purchase all rental stock across the country, nationalize rentals. Unless the government does that, which would be, what do, what, what do we call that when the government takes over everything like that? Isn't that um, mm -hmm. communism? Yeah. When the state owns your, all the grocery stores and all the rental stock, that's communism. The state controls all of that. Not socialism. That's communism. So this man is telling us 
when all of his fans constantly chant, communist, you're a communist, Trudeau's a communist dictator, which you can't be, you can be a dictator or a communist, you can't be the two at the same time, they, they, they're completely opposed to one another. If you actually understood what communism and dictatorship is, clearly they don't, number one. And number two, this man is proposing that he is going to build the homes, lower rent, lower your grocery prices. The only feasible, possible way to do that is to nationalize them. And that's not going to happen because his, his puppet master overlords are the ones who own all of those things and donate to his party. What he will do, if he is elected prime minister, is lower their taxes. See, he, he will um, socialize the losses and privatize the profits. And we will pay, just like we're paying for him at Stornoway. I could go on for hours about the, the uh, disgusting amount of lies that just happened in, in a two-minute video clip. And, and here's the worst part. It goes completely unanswered by the mainstream media. They just let him say this shit and let him get away with it. And I'm just, I've had it. No more. Uh, no more, Mr. Nice Guy. The gloves are off. I mean, I know I've been adamant before about how I feel about this, but now I'm at a point where, no, I'm calling him out publicly. The man just lied about seven times in a two-minute period. Mm -hmm. And nobody calls him out on it except us, it seems. <sighs> yep, I thought you were going to show me the, the how many, how many, how many, how many, how many. Oh, no, I can't watch that again. I'll punch my screen if I do that. So, yeah. Um, combien? Yep. Combien? 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 I can't watch that again. I will punch my screen. Yep. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, Pierre did what Pierre does. Pierre did what he does. What he does. Uh, but yeah, exactly. Uh, your point, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, let me uh, come and insult you and punch down on you and then uh, tell you what it is that you must do to make it easier for me to win. And, you know, when he says, like, Jagmeet Singh, you know, do all of this and call a carbide so we can call a carbon tax election. It's like, oh, oh who? So who decided, who made you God and yeah. decided that even if an election were called, that it was going to be a carbon tax election? And what makes you think that if Jagmeet Singh were to acquiesce to your demand to do whatever was needed for an election to be called, that Jagmeet Singh would agree that it be called a carbon tax election? Because, <laughs> I mean, the last election that just happened, the NDP's climate plan kind of got laughed out of the water. <clears throat> So I'm pretty sure he's not too keen on having an actual carbon tax election. He hasn't actually shown a predilection for it before. Just saying. So, yeah. Uh, this guy. Um, you know, the, the whole thing, right? It's like, to tell this person to do this and then judge me, call an election, and Ukraine don't want anything carbon related in your budget so that you can join the EU. I forbid it from the opposition benches over across the pond in Canada. He seems to be think he already runs everything. This guy. Well, yes, he gets to dream. decide when we have an election, what the election's going to be about, what the other parties must do. Oh, yeah. To yeah. Vote. yeah. I'm, That's a dictator. That's dictatorship. He's a bit of an asshole, isn't he? A narcissist. Just with a soup song of jackass. <laughs> well, there's, just... a, there's, a, there's another clip of him. I'm not going to bother to show it because it's nine seconds and it's annoying as hell. But he was asked multiple times during that press conference, if you want to call it that, uh, if he would cut our PharmaCare plan. And I say our PharmaCare plan because the PharmaCare plan is for every Canadian. He refused to answer. Why? Because he's voted three times against this bill. Three times. And you know what he was, his response was yesterday? I can't vote against something that isn't a thing. Which is how he sidesteps around the fact that he will damn well cut it the moment he assumed power. Mm-hmm which is why we can't let that happen. Yeah. Now, but uh, the thing that you mentioned uh, at the beginning about uh, the vaccine stuff here, um, 
It says here in the oh, CBC that yeah. the Supreme Court of Canada will not hear People Party's leader Maxime Bernier and former progressive conservative of New Premier of Newfoundland Brian Peckford's appeals over the vaccine mandate imposed on air travelers during the COVID-19 pandemic. From November 30th, 2021 to June 20th, 2022, all air and rail passengers traveling within Canada or leaving Canada were required to be fully vaccinated for COVID-19. Bernie and Peckford filed judicial reviews taking issue with those rules, but the mandates were suspended before hearings could take place. The federal court struck down the judicial, judicial review applications on the basis that the issue had become moot, ruling that hearing a review of a mandate that no longer existed was not warranted. The Federal Court of Appeal also dismissed the cases in a decision that said that the Federal Court had, quote, correctly identified the approach on a motion to strike for mootness, according to a Supreme Court summary of the case. The Supreme Court of Canada was asked to consider whether the conditions used to reject a hearing on issues that had become moot should be altered in the context of emergency orders issued by the government. On Thursday, the Supreme Court of Canada declined to hear appeals for either cases. Quote, I'm extremely disappointed by the Supreme Court of Canada's decision to dismiss our appeal in the case against the tyrann tyrannical liberal travel ban for the unvaccinated, Bernier said out next on Thursday. Yes, I bet you are extremely disappointed that you will not be getting uh, additional months of free publicity mm -hmm. using the Supreme Court as a backdrop. Yeah. I guess you're going to have to come up for another plan, uh, Mr. Thirsty, for attention. <laughs> Your glass is empty. Um, Alison Pejovic, the counsel for both cases, said in a statement that the decision from the top court has denied Canadians, quote, the right to know whether the federal government acted lawfully in preventing both men from traveling, deeming cases challenging draconian emergency orders that harm millions of Canadians, moot damages confidence in the justice system, and undermines the rule of law. That the statement, that second pass phrase or sentence, is completely weird and completely miswritten and totally misformulated as for the first one uh no canadians know whether or not the federal government acted lawfully in preventing both men from traveling well there's this thing called tuberculosis that existed before covid and we have similar rules for it yeah that have existed like for a long time during uh the hiv crisis uh, people who are HIV positive weren't allowed to travel to certain countries. I mean, it, it's been done. None of this is new, Boo Boo no. Kitty. None of this is new. It's, yes, the government acted lawfully. They have that authority and that power, yes. <laughs> Just, <laughs> Canadians have a right to, no, no, we, we do know. Those of us who have been paying attention all along for the past 40, 50, 60 years, no. This is not a new concept. This is not a new reality. It isn't something that something just popped up and said, hey, government can instruct, uh, can institute travel bans in cases of communicable diseases. We just learned in 2021. No. No. <laughs> it's just, it's just, it's, see, this is what happens though. Mm -hmm. This is the grift because they go to a whole bunch of people who don't know this, get them to open their wallets. Right. Things, and then they finance all of these frivolous court cases. Again, another thing, right? It's like if you're wondering, you know, if you do have a legitimate court case and you're wondering why it's taken so long, it's because our courts are being flooded with this kind of bull crap. Our legal system is being flooded because I. Uh, I have a grievance, so I'm going to create a right or manufacture a law or find a rent a guide and a backpack for a three day trek in the woods to find a way to interpret this law in a totally wacko mm -hmm. way. Um, and then, you know, some, you know, hopefully I will get a judge or someone that says, yeah, I would hear this and then use up time and resources for something that will eventually go nowhere because on its face it's ridiculous the charge on its face here was that the federal government does not have right to make travel policy in the case of a situation of communicable illness during a global pandemic no less i think we all know where this ends oh yeah 
before we even like open a law book. I'm. Oh, yeah. It's it's like when Stephen Harper said, "Hey, I can unilaterally change the Senate, really, because the Constitution's pretty darn clear that you can't, and the Constitution's pretty darn clear that the Senate itself that you would like to abolish would have a word to say about that before you would actually succeed." Are you really sure you want it? And it'd be for better part of ten years, mm -hmm. he ran on that, and he had people opening their wallet for a triple E Senate, which literally, and back then. Mostly it was seniors that were conservative Correct. voters that have flipped a little bit. Now seniors are more liberal voters. Well, According and, to and polls, also, it's about uh, the only group that they still have. But yeah. the conservatives, sorry, I'll just finish the thought. You know, was get, So basically for eight to ten years, Stephen Harper and the conservatives literally fleeced grandma and grandpa over and over and over again, promising them a triple E Senate that he never was going to be able to deliver, and he knew it, and he took it all the way to the Supreme Court, and they kept on sending the money until the Supreme Court said something. <laughs> no, you can't do that. Yeah. And now we don't hear them talking about a triple E in it anymore now, do we? Nope. Because now uh, the goose doesn't lay any more eggs. Well, there's something you need to, to remember here, too, is that... Um, Seniors, as you say, you just stated a moment ago, are, are more and more voting liberal. A lot of uh, seniors, because senior starts at 65, right? That's mm -hmm. when it's considered the, the senior citizen, if you will. Well, that is only five years older than the firstborn generation X. So they're at the tail end of the boomers. And most seniors I know that are 65, or tail end of the boomer generation, um, they have more in line with Generation X than they do their boomer parents. Mm -hmm. Which is why we're starting to see that shift. And as more and more seniors, uh, gen, uh, the boomer generation and older, are catching wind of the foul style of, of politicking that we see from people like Donald Trump and Pierre Polyev, they're disgusted with it. you got to remember the boomer generation grew up with Pearson, with Trudeau, Trudeau Sr., Pierre Trudeau, Lester B. Pearson, gentlemen who, even though they could be uh, uh, um, fierce in the trenches during their political uh, moments in the House of Commons, they were also bipartisan on many, many things. They weren't always partisan, and they did not pull the stunts that you see the current leader of the opposition doing. I guarantee you, Brian Mulroney is going to come back from the grave to strangle that little puke. <laughs> okay, I'm being, I'm being hyperbolic, of course. But uh, Brian Mulroney threw his support behind Justin Trudeau. Yeah. Why? Because Justin Trudeau's politics are more in line with Joe Clark's progressive conservatives. And Joe Clark's progressive conservatives were more progressive than Brian Mulroney's. Mulroney right. was a little bit more of a fiscal conservative. Joe Clark was a very progressive conservative. Very progressive. Still is. Still is. And I've, I've met Joe a number of times. Nice man. A uh, very nice man. Because he, he lives and works in Ottawa still. I bump into him in, in a corner store. It's happened a number of times. I was like, oh, Mr. Clark. He's like, call me Joe. Hi, Joe. Nice to meet you. Uh, I've met Jean Crescent and. You know how they always called Jean Chrétien the little guy from Schoenwingen? Mm -hmm. He's not little. He's like 6'4". He's a big man. First time I met him, I'm like, I thought you were the little guy from Schoenwingen. <laughs> He's taller than me, and I'm six, six and change, right? So, right. Yeah. Uh, but what I'm trying to say is this, this current crop of uh, social conservatives, as they like to call themselves, they're the Reform Party with a, a new name is all it is. They have disgusted many uh, in Gen X and, and the latter part of the boomer generation who, like I said, more identify with Generation X than anything else. And they are just disgusted with this type of politics. This is not exactly, T. Wigmore, not your grandfather's conservative party, like the GOP in the U.S. recognized the shift in vote. 
Well, this is the other thing from Carol. You're, you're absolutely right. Seniors want care, dental health, and most importantly, geriatric care. They won't get it if the conservatives win, and they know this. You are absolutely correct, Carol. Mm-hmm. Indeed. Uh, now to finish off the article about uh, the Bernier thing. Bernier has a history of unsuccessfully challenging pandemic public health orders. Last year, he was ordered to pay more than $2,000 in fines after admitting to twice violating public health orders in Manitoba. The People's Party of Canada leader was charged in June 2021 for attending rallies with more people than allowed at a time under COVID-19 pandemic restrictions in Manitoba. Last year, Bernier was also convicted of violating Saskatchewan's public safety rules during the pandemic. Bernie and six others were found guilty in connection to what was advertised as a, quote, freedom rally in Regina 2021. At the time, there was a public health order in effect banning outdoor gatherings of more than 10 people. Police presented evidence that more than 200 people attended the protests at the Cenotaph in Victoria Park on May 8, 2021, and Bernie was among the promoted speakers. And that's the other thing with these grifts, is that uh, these people keep on going out and breaking the law. Mm -hmm. Like this, in these small ways, yes, not the big nasty ways, but in these small ways like this, and then they keep on running to you for them to pay your lawyer fees and their yes. fines. Right? Yes. So that they keep on, because they're, you know when they say that X number of percent of crime is committed by the same people who are recidivists? Yes. These are the recidivists. Yeah, they absolutely are. Well, <laughs> Case in point, the Ezra, Ezra Levant. Levant's and whatnot. These are the, the these are these are the recidivists. They're the ones that keep up ending in court again and again and again so, and again. So because we, why they found suckers to finance them. This is where we drop in uh, Pierre Polyev's line: "Jail, not bail." Yes, exactly. <laughs> and I mean, it's not like these people couldn't have seen it coming, because uh, if we do a little flashback to uh, May sixteenth, twenty twenty four. In British Columbia, the BC Supreme Court has ruled that the province's COVID-19 vaccine mandates for healthcare workers was justified based on the significant risk posed by the virus when the province's mandate was renewed in October 2023. Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry had first imposed the orders on all workers in BC healthcare settings in October 2021. The order was renewed in 2022 and 2023 and remains in place across BC as of May uh, 2024 when this article was written. According to a judgment posted Monday, around 1,800 workers lost their jobs for being unvaccinated, contrary to the mandate. Some of those workers, which included nurse practitioners, surgeons, psychiatrists, and administrators, filed separate lawsuits against the province, which were all collectively heard by Justice Simon Koval. The workers argued that the province's orders were not reasonable as COVID-19 was no longer an immediate and significant public health risk in October 2023, and that unvaccinated healthcare workers did not pose a greater risk to patients than vaccinated healthcare workers. They also argued that those who worked remotely or did not deal with patients did not need to be subject to the order, and that some workers' charter rights to freedom of religion and liberty were violated. Koval, however, said the provincial health officers' mandates were reasonable in light of scientific evidence at the time. Quote, I find that the orders did not engage their rights to liberty or security of the person, Koval wrote. The orders did not compel them to accept unwanted medical treatment and so did not interfere with their bodily integrity or medical self-determination. Koval also noted that the charter does not protect the right to work in any particular profession. I keep on saying that. <laughs> Nor the right to avoid the stress of being denied work for not following workplace rules, which Mr. Grizzly <laughs> keeps on saying. While the judge largely ruled against the workers, Koval did send one aspect of the case back to the provincial health officer to potentially reconsider her order, that of healthcare workers who could perform their job remotely or without interacting with patients. I Reasonable. I find the petitioners have demonstrated that there remains a lack of justification for not including a reconsideration process for remote and purely administrative workers, Koval wrote, particularly given the heightened burden of justification because what is at stake is the loss of a person's job as a healthcare professional. The petitioning workers had asked the judge to decide if the province's mandate was reasonable in light of the scientific information available to the provincial health officer at the time of the order's renewal in October 2023. One of the arguments cited by the workers was the lack of other public health restrictions at the time, including public masking and vaccine passports. No other province had broad mandatory vaccine requirements in place. The, quote, the petitioners also pointed to the WHO declaration in May 2023 that it is time for countries to transition from emergency mode to managing COVID-19 alongside other infectious diseases, the judgment reads. However, Koval said that the PHO's orders were justified based on the available science and that the P 
PHO's public health officer in this case, based on the available science and that the lack of broader public health measures didn't necessarily mean specific vaccine mandates weren't necessarily in the healthcare system. Quote, an important aspect of the within healthcare context is that as the record repeatedly indicated, hospital patients and long-term care residents are more vulnerable than the general population to COVID-19. It must also be borne in mind that, generally speaking, such patients do not choose to be in these healthcare settings. If there were no vaccine mandate, they could simply not choose. They could not simply choose to avoid receiving treatment from unvaccinated healthcare workers. In regard to some workers' arguments that the religious rights were infringed, Koval found that the orders may have done so, but the infringement was reasonable in the context of protecting public health. And the reason I read this article to you, kids and cubs, is because if in the province of British Columbia the Supreme Court of British Columbia ruled that vaccine mandates for health care workers were as reasonable, injecting something into your body, then a vaccine mandate by the federal government with regard to travel, which doesn't involve you doing anything to your body, was certainly going to be considered reasonable. <laughs> Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I um, mean, uh, right. So uh, when I say uh, they are using uh, the courts and whatnot as backdrops, just like PP uses the House of Commons and Questions uh-huh. period as backdrops, I guess, and they get people to fund this. This is what's going on here. So I'm going to just use the uh, the legal system in that way speaking of the legal system i think you may have mentioned it yesterday mr grizzly um but do you remember uh a gentleman from the public order emergency commission named brendan miller yes lawyer who was called an idiot who stated that his case had a hole in it because he tried to pinpoint somebody in the audience as the person who was waving a nazi flag when it wasn't him. Yes. Yeah, that guy. And, and thought that another person was a journalist that he was accusing of stuff yeah. and then chased him down the hallway to say like, like I could arrange for you to testify right now if you want to come and testify because d- normal people do that. And he said, yeah, yeah, you know what? I just saw you in a hallway, but sure, I'll go testify without ever having consulted a lawyer in any way. Yeah, that, that, that happens. Well, uh, apparently, um, uh, Brendan Miller uh, got a job <laughs> yesterday <laughs> from uh, yeah. Daniel Smith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And don't forget, Marco Van Hugenboss is now on the, uh, sits on the board of uh, UCP... Um, Riding in Calgary South, I believe it is. Yes, which was uh, Tyler Sandro's Correct. former yeah. riding. So, so a convicted criminal, the, yes. the ringleader of the Coots blockade, is now in government. Yes, and again, well, not in government. No, not per se, but more like in the party apparatus. Correct. But we, well, I mean, it's really not a surprise when you think that she, um, oh. What if I just um, picked up the phone and called, oh, I don't know, um, uh, Arthur Peslowski. And um, uh, uh, let's see. we talked about maybe what I seeing what I could do to make sure that um, um, he doesn't go to jail. What if? What if? What if I did that? So um, if I'm the type of person that would do that, then is it really that much of a, oh, I am... Um, uh, stretch to uh, see that I would um, bring someone who um, tried to maybe organize a coup um, into the apparatus of my party. uh, No, Uh, it wouldn't. uh, And uh, uh, as for uh, Mr. Miller, um, Somebody, if you have some uh, paddles, uh, you might want to bring them to the site here of this accident and yell clear. 
Great news, Alberta. The UCP has just named Calgary lawyer Brendan Miller to the Law Enforcement Review Board. Miller was the Freedom Convoy lawyer who gave Eva Chipiak her 15 minutes of fame to cross-examine Trudeau. Miller was forced to step down during (laughs) the Emergencies uh, Act inquiry when he went off the rails and falsely accused people who weren't at the protests of carrying Nazi and Confederate flags and got ejected from the inquiry. But I am confident that he will be a fair, level-headed, unbiased, impartial conservative representative whenever he is reviewing the actions of Alberta's law enforcement. Now, that's from a Daniel Smith parody account. I, I need everybody to understand that. It's not actually from Daniel Smith. It's from a parody account. Except here's the thing. The parody in this case is the absolute truth. <laughs> Just, there's not a word of a lie in there. Everything in that satirical comment is truthful. So when you go to the Beaverton to get the news and it's actually more realistic than what some politicians are telling you, you should be a little bit disturbed by that. According to CTV, I'll be right back. I gotta grab a coffee. A lawyer who represented Freedom Convoy organizers during the public inquiry into the use of the Emergencies Act is being sued for defamation by a Toronto consultant he suggested carried a Nazi flag to the protests in Ottawa. On January 29th. This was from December 2022. It's been sued for defamation. (laughs) He's the person she tapped to be on the Law Enforcement Review Board. Yeah, I, 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 I see your comments, Kits. To Kit T. Wigmore, Law Enforcement Board parody becomes reality. I can't believe all of this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's pretty terrible, isn't it? So, yeah, uh, they have... Um, the Again, I keep on saying, who says conservatives don't believe in recycling, right? Ugh. My word, Brendan Miller, the, the, again, failing forward, failing forward. Absolutely unbelievable uh, what these people get away with. Uh, and also what they just have the gall to attempt, the outright unmitigated gall to attempt. It's just, wow, wow, wow. Incredible. Um, I want to show you something, uh, Kits and Cubs. Oh, but Mr. Grizzly is here. Okay, you know what? That's all right. Um, yes, I think it was yesterday, uh, since we're talking about uh, our, our Olympians and whatnot, and people who make us proud. Um, the Paralympics are going on, but there was one last little bit of business uh, with regard to to the Olympics and um, it involves Canadian gymnast uh, Elizabeth Black or Ellie Black. Ellie Black, yeah. Now, uh, you know, uh, on our show, we showed you a clip at one point after some gymnasts, I believe it was from France, did not qualify for the all around and she was there and she was consoling her mm-hmm. in some way. According to the CBC, Halifax gymnast Ellie Black says she feels honored after winning an Olympic award that recognizes athletes who exemplify sportsmanship, the spirit of fair play and respect for others. The International Fair Play Committee and the International Olympic Committee announced Wednesday that Black was the recipient of the Paris 2024 Fair Play Award. Quote, I think it's just truly incredible, and I'm incredibly honored, the four-time Olympian told CBC News in an interview Wednesday, just after a training session in her hometown. Uh, It looks like she's going to continue on, so she's Mm going to try for a fifth Olympics. Quote, I think it really shows what the true meaning of sport is in the Olympics and bringing people together and the sportsmanship, really looking up for everyone as an individual, as a human being first. Black was at the Alta Gymnastics Club in Halifax on Wednesday when she found out she was getting the award. Quote, one of the other athletes in the gym, he had seen it online and I didn't have my phone on me, so I hadn't gotten any calls or seen any notifications or anything. And I thought he was kind of joking, Black said. 
So that was special just to find out and be here with the team and the athletes training and the coaches and to just be able to soak up that moment here at home in Halifax was truly incredible. Athletes and fans submitted nominations for the award on social media and a jury with representatives from the IOC and the International Fair Play Committee then selected a shortlist of finalists. The final decision was made by public vote, which garnered tens of thousands of responses. Quote, we are thrilled to see Ellie Black receive this well-deserved recognition, said Yeno Kamuti, president of the Fair Play Committee. Her example serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of sportsmanship and respect in competition. The Olympic website notes Black sportsmanship was on full display at the 2024 Summer Games in Paris when she led the Canadian team to a fifth-place finish and placed sixth in the individual all-around competition, despite falling off the beam. Mm-hmm. She still finished sixth. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was yes. pretty good considering, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. But it was an emotional interaction with the gymnast from the host country that garnered the world's attention. The French team struggled through the competition with star Melanie de Jesus de Santos suffering falls in each of her three opening routines, the website said. De Jesus de Santos and Team France did not advance to any medal round. After competition, quote, after competition, Black and Canadian teammate Shallon Olson were seen comforting De Jesus dos Santos, wiping away her tears and offering extended hugs and words of encouragement, reminding people around the world of the power of the Olympic Games to unite others from across the globe, wrote Scott Bregman for Olympics.com. Thinking back to the moment which was captured on a cell phone video and shared wildly on social media, Black said she approached De Jesus dos Santos to make her feel better after a difficult day. Black said she's competed with the French gymnast over the years and that she's a friend. She said they were both on Simone Biles' Gold Over America Tour in 2021 after the Tokyo Olympic Games, and they've stayed in touch. Black said De Jesus dos Santos is an incredible person and athlete. Quote, I just wanted to go over and comfort her and just remind her that it's not her gymnastics, it's who she is as a person. Having an off day or results, they don't define who you are. They don't define what you've done, what you've brought to the sport, what you've brought to all these people, she said. All the spectators there were there to cheer her on, to cheer France on, no matter what. Even after Shiva fell, they were chanting her name. Black said gymnasts, no matter where they come from, can relate to the pressure. Quote, it can be really tough. You experience the highest of highs and the lowest of lows. And so I was just happy that we could give her some support, just so she didn't feel like she was alone. Black documented much of her Olympic experience on her Instagram account, creating fun and humorous videos with her fellow athletes, but also laying bare the hardships that can sometimes come with competition. Quote, I write this to all of the athletes who made it to the Olympics and those that didn't. Those who won and lost had personal success or feel, felt they fell short of their dreams and their work. I hope you know that you yourself are enough, she wrote. Who you are, what you bring to the sport, being a role model for so many, being your unique authentic self, that is so much more than enough. The other finalists for the Fair Play Award were World Rowing President Jean-Christophe Roland, Fencer Sanad Gemsi of Hungary, Cyclists Fariba Hashimi of Afghanistan and Hanna Tseirak of Belarus, and German chef de mission Olaf Tabor. Black said she vacationed in Italy with her friends after the Paris Olympics. She's been busy training since returning to Halifax, and she'll head out on the Gold Over America tour when it begins next month in the United States. So, uh, interesting bookends for the Olympic experience because it opened with Drone Gate. For Team Canada, mm-hmm. and the suspicion that uh, maybe Team Canada uh, had cheaters, and our Olympic soccer team showed that that was not the case in terms for the players. Correct. Uh, it was and they did coaching. it with grace. Yes. Yes, and and, uh, and and had all their points taken away, and then went on proceeded to get to the the quarterfinals and, and yeah. went to uh, extra time. Mm-hmm. And, and the so added time, then extra time, then added time, then penalties, and lost on penalties, which is yeah. why I play the game. I, I, I know uh, people I, will I know. argue that, but why play the game if you're going to penalties? Yeah. I'm, what they should do is start taking players off each side. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, so started from that, and, and the players have since taken a few strips off the coaching team. Uh, it didn't end with the Olympics. After the Olympics, the, some of the players have maintained. It's like, like what the hell? Yeah. Um, so at one end was Drone Gate, and ending it at the other end with Ellie Black winning the Fair Play Award. Yeah, that's um, voted on by her peers. Yeah, and and, and the journalists, 
the, yeah, the public. Yeah, there's a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of us. Um, let's stick with sports for another minute here. I have some sad well, news. Well, okay. Uh, I'm. I, oh, I thought you were I done wanted, with that. Yeah, sorry. No, I just got to have one more thing with that. And one of the reasons I am mentioning this uh, is because yesterday there was another great display of sportsmanship by a Canadian. And I wanted to bring it to your attention. Uh, and in this case, oh, we did get tagged yesterday for that 20 second yeah. clip. I had to edit it out. Oh, okay. That's yeah, all right. The 20 second clip um, we showed. Yeah, we had to yep. edit it out. Yep. Uh, I don't have to worry about a clip for this uh, because it's just a picture. Um, oh, okay. But it comes from uh, Bianca Andrescu. Okay. Who um, lost in the first round of the U.S. Open to Jasmine Paolini of uh, Italy, who I said has been having a credible year. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you would, Mr. Grizzly. Just a second here. Hat trick for Jasmine Paolini. Although, well, you get one. You get one day. I'll get <laughs> you one less. day. I'll, I'll get you one day. Sorry. Thank you. Let's start from the beginning. Hat trick for Jasmine Paolini. LOL. I'll get you one day. And laughing hands and prayers, uh, praise, I guess, pray, uh, hand, praying hands of praise. Is that what it is? Or is it a high yeah, five? Yeah, or, or high five, one or the other, yeah. yeah. So thank you, U.S. Open, for the opportunity. I didn't know if I'd be here last year. Stepping out on that court gave me goosebumps. Thank you for the continuous love and support. Until next time, love. I adore you, New York. So three times this year, she's been faced with probably the hottest player. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, I'll get you eventually. Yes, But again, great sportsmanship. Exactly. Well, as I said a moment ago there, I've, I've got some sad news in sports for those of you who are not aware. Uh, Johnny Hockey, a.k.a., well, Johnny Goudreau, Goudreau, a.k.a. Johnny Hockey, who was a star with the uh, Calgary Flames for about uh, for about a decade, I think, almost, almost 10 years. He and his brother have uh, perished in a roadside cycling accident. Oh. Said uh, two people were struck and killed by a car in Oldman Township, Salem County, New Jersey State Police reported. Crash happened at the intersection of Auburn Road and Stumpy Lane in Pedrick Town after 8 p.m. when two adult bicyclists were struck and killed, authorities said. And there is an official announcement from the Columbus Blue Jackets who he was playing for. Uh, and there, were, you know, uh, there was an announcement from Gary Batman and the Blue Jackets. Um, so it was his, his, he was out with his brother and they were struck and killed by a car. Um, the thing that's, uh, the headline says Johnny Goudreau has passed away. I'm like, no, 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 passed away. No, he was taken. What I, I'm just wondering, what is it with language today when people are so afraid to say the proper terms to describe something? Mm -hmm. It's like I was out at the pub and somebody said, I got to use the bathroom. I'm like, okay, see you later. Have a good night. They go, what do you mean? I'm just going to the bathroom. Yeah, well, that means you're going home, right? Because there's no bathrooms here in the pub. There's toilets. Mm -hmm. There's toilets or washrooms if you want to refer to it, but there's no bathrooms here. There's none. And then people look at me like, you pedantic asshole. And I'm like, yeah, but what is wrong with using proper terms for things? Why are people afraid to say the word toilet? That's a North American thing. Because in Europe and mm -hmm. the rest of the world, I have to go to toilet. Not even a, okay. Not even a question. It's funny how we, we they, they want to say that he passed away. No, he was killed in a cycling accident. That's not passing away. That's mm -hmm. being taken. Yeah. At far too young an age. He was only 31. He had yeah. a lot of hockey left in him, and he's, oh, a, yeah. he's a husband and a father. So, you know, his, his wife is now a widow, and his, his uh, child is now without a father. Hmm. And his brother perished. So imagine how their parents must feel about all of this. So it's a really sad story, and I'm, I'm, I hate to report on it, but, you know, it's, it's, it's news. Hmm. And we were talking sports. So anyway, I thought I'd, I thought I'd let everybody know about that. All right. Uh, thank you for that. Um, okay. It's going to be an awkward segue. Um, but, Sorry. Uh, but... Paralympics. <laughs> uh, from death to Paralympics. Sorry, kids. <laughs> um, but uh, the Paralympics are on the way. And um, I don't know if you've heard Kids and Cups, um, but... Um, Team Canada is already mining some hardware. 
Oh. Day one of competition, two medals for Team Canada so far. The first one is from this uh, very fierce athlete, and her name is Kate O'Brien. And uh, she picked up Canada's first medal at uh, the Paralympics in cycling, the C4-5 500-meter sprint. So congratulations to you. And uh, the other medal came from um, someone we can almost always count on uh, because it's her 11th Paralympic medal in her career. Swimmer Aurélie Rivard, right here on the right in the in the picture, uh, took the bronze uh, in I believe it was the fifty meter freestyle C ten, if I am not mistaken. But uh, let me uh, just uh, double check that for you to be sure. The S ten, sorry, S ten fifty meter freestyle, not C ten. Um, and for those of you, because I told you about it yesterday. But I figured I would uh, look it all up because I think I'm starting to figure it out uh, with regard to the classification system. Um, and I got this uh, from the AP here. To ensure for a competition between Paralympians, athletes are grouped by how limited they are by their impairment. In other words, how much of an effect it has on their ability to compete in their cho chosen sport. So, for example, someone uh, who uh, is competing... Uh, um, because uh, the, uh, the condition they have is dwarfism, isn't classified as someone who is uh, competing swimming, uh, but they're missing a hand. Right. Like this, um, because, you know, different body types, different abilities, you know, different times. Um, the classification aims to ensure that every competitor has a fair chance to win and that sporting excellence determines which athlete or team is ultimately victorious. Um, the Paralympics divide impairments into three groups, physical, visual, and intellectual. Physical impairments are further divided into eight categories, including impaired muscle power, impaired range of movement, limb deficiency, and short stature. Every individual Paralympic sport determines which impairment types they have competitions for. Some, like para-athletics and para-swimming, have competitions for athletes with every type of impairment, while others have just one category. Goalball, for instance, is only for teams or players who are blind or visually impaired. Right. All Paralympians undergo an assessment by a panel of experts to determine which sports classes they should compete in based on the degree and nature of their impairment. Each sport has its own criteria for how to assess eligibility of competitors. Some, like power powerlifting, only have one sports class. Para athletics, which is open to athletes with any impairment, has more than 50 sports classes. The classification system focuses on grouping together athletes with similar functional abilities rather than similar disabilities, so ability athletes with different impairments can compete against each other if they are allocated to the same sports class. Oh, I like the way that that was phrased. Mm -hmm. Athletes with similar functional abilities rather than similar disabilities. Correct. Just interesting turns well, phrase it's, there. It's amazing um, how you can change a few words in a sentence and it completely changes the way you view it. Yep. Yeah. It's Indeed. like when 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 uh, Super Kyle said to me, and I was struggling to come up with the right term, and I said, "Well, somebody who is," uh, and I said, "And I regret saying this, but he helped me along the way." He said, "And I said wheelchair bound." He goes, "Paul, I'm not bound to my chair. I use it. I'm a wheelchair user." I'm like, "Thank you." I was struggling for a better terminology because mm -hmm. when you say, "Oh, you're bound to a wheelchair," that's a negative visual that right. conjures up in your mind. But when you say you're a wheelchair user, it's like, "Yeah." Yeah, exactly. That's a mobility device, just like these are for me. Right. This is a mobility device. I can't drive a car without these because I can't see a bloody thing. So it's, it's a mobility device. So you're a wheelchair user. You're not bound to a wheelchair. So the, what you said just a second ago, the way they change that and rephrase the words, similar abilities instead of disabilities, I think that's just a better way to paint it. Yeah. You know? yeah. So from... What I've been gathering from watching and paying attention is that um, the letter refers to the sport. So track and field was for if you're running, it's T for track. If you're a thrower, it's F for field. If you're in swimming, it's S. But if you're swimming breaststroke, because you know all the 
the fly front crawl and back crawl is the same movement of the arm. It's just sometimes two of them together or in reverse, but it's the same movement. But breast strokes are different strokes. So you'll have yes. SB and then the medley relays because they involve all four will have S and M. Uh, Baccia will be BC. And then the number, uh, it seems that the higher the number, uh, the greater the, uh, the the physical ability or the lesser the functional uh, impairment. So uh, a swimmer that's uh, swimming uh, 50 freestyle and is ranked S5, for example, uh, may, be, uh, may have uh, the condition of dwarfism mm -hmm. or may be missing uh, um, a full arm mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or something, as opposed to someone who is a S10 who might be missing uh, a hand right yes but uh but have full strength and legs right well for example the, when kyle was telling us about the guy who uh is nine seconds behind the world record holder in i think it's 100 meter freestyle and he has no arms and yeah. he's nine seconds behind and people go nine seconds a long time in a swimming race um yeah didn't summer mcintosh win a race against the world's best by six seconds mm-hmm and this man has no arms. Yeah. He would the, kick my ass all over the pool. There was a swimmer from China yesterday, I think, who was doing the 200 freestyle, but had no arms, so swimming on his back. Yeah. Because on freestyle, you could swim anything, right? Correct. It's just that the front crawl is known to be, to be the, the fastest, fastest, so that's yeah. what everybody uses. But you can swim anything. I guess, but just literally just kicking, 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 kicking. And if it was 100, yeah. this... He uh, probably would have finished first or second in his heat, but it's 200 after a while, the legs get a little tired. And, yeah. you know, the people that, uh, you know, had arms and legs uh, did eventually pass him. Uh, but for the first 100 meters, woo, yeah. no kidding, yeah. dude was going <laughs> just on Lake Power alone. So, uh, yeah. Uh, if you have some time, Kits and Cubs, uh, do check in uh, to the Paralympics. Uh, like I said, if you want to watch live, uh, there are events basically like if you're Eastern time, like uh, 2 o'clock and 2.30 in the morning till about 4 something in the afternoon, uh, Eastern time all day long, and it's on gym. And if you go to the Paralympics site, you will find the schedule there. And if not, you just want to watch the CBC TV coverage, then I believe it's at... Uh, um, um, the mornings at 11 p.m. Eastern, so that will change the time. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. in the morning, sorry, Eastern, and that changes with you on the time zone. Then after that, there's something, I believe, at uh, um, 8 p.m. and 11 p.m. I'll double check that for you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is always at the same time, no matter what, and because it's a pre-record, right? And then uh, and then it's broadcast at a time that you can check in on. Well, you know, when we were just speaking there a few moments ago, how you change phrasing on things and it changes your, uh, your entire viewpoint and outlook mm -hmm. and, you know, puts, put a positive spin on something. And one of my favorite ones recently that I read online was instead of saying, I'm sorry for being late, or I'm sorry for this, say, thank you for waiting for me. Yes. And the, the first response was, thank you for letting me sleep with your sister. <laughs> oh. Not, I'm sorry I slept with your sister. Thank you for letting me sleep with your sister. I couldn't stop laughing when I read that. <laughs> it's, it's like, what are you going to do? Get mad at the guy? Like, uh... Oh, my word. <laughs> it's funny, though. Come on. It's oh. hilarious. Oh, God. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, <laughs> Jeez. That's <laughs> terrible. It's funny. It's hilarious. <laughs> okay. So, it's so H I hilarious. Okay, so I was mistaken. It's uh, 2 p.m. Eastern is the Petro Canada Prime, which changes for time zone. So if you're watching in the Pacific, it's 11 a.m. Uh, and then the ever, other two shows, Paralympics game prime time uh, is at 8 p.m., whatever your local time zone is. And the uh, Canadian Tire Paralympics tonight, hosted by Devin Haru and Roselyne Fidion at 11.30 p.m. local time, whatever your time zone. There you go. I have now to, I got it right. I'm going to... I'm going to switch something up from the I have two. one more sports thing since we're okay. celebrating Canadians right. that make us proud. Um, at the U.S. Open tennis yesterday, Gabriel Diallo, who is uh, the young Canadian, I believe, who had started the tournament ranked 129th or 143rd or something like that. Right. And um, played his first round match qualifying for, so played his three qualifying matches, qualified, 
this played his first round match and won his first ever Grand Slam match because this is the second time he got into a Grand Slam because he was at Winnipeg uh, at Wimbledon earlier this year and then had his second round match yesterday. The only Canadian left in singles because the other four, all the household names lost in the first round. He was playing against number 24, mm. Arthur Fils from France. And in four sets, defeated him to advance to the third round. So this guy is playing like a top 32 player all of a sudden. Um, he closed that match like a boss. Okay. No yips. No stutter on his serve at the end. What's the a last? Yip? last yeah the, his very very last one no, he was what, leading, what like, is a yip in tennis i've never heard in, that before. in tennis is like you know you're serving well then all of a sudden you like serving to close the match out or you have it you, you just take the lead like this and then you like you just flub it well you start, yip, you start double faulting or you start a yip in Tur turkey means something very different okay yeah and it's not a, good yeah, it's case, really bad okay yeah we say that's where you get a case of the yips yeah you yeah, maybe don't say that around a turkish person they okay go, what <laughs> really bad trust me you can look it up if you want it's not good but he just closed it like he had been doing this all his life at this level like wow. there was no doubt at all that he was whoo that boy can play i'll mm. tell you and even with and here's where, why I'm saying that Grand Slams are a really big deal. That win yesterday made it so that his prize money in that one match, he has about or just a little bit more or just a little less prize money this year than he's made, I believe, his entire career. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Or it's either his entire, well, yeah, because he hasn't been on the scene long, so it could be his entire career or or the entire year this year up until now. It is. Um, so uh, that will make sure he'll be able, because tennis players are all, like sometimes when you're younger and up and coming, you get some help for your national federation, but it's all self-finance, right? They mm -hmm. pay for the coach, the physiotherapist, the hotels, the travel and whatnot from their prize money. So if you're not winning, mm -hmm. you're not making, guess, you're not earning or if you're playing at the lower levels and not able to get that breakthrough. You're very scratching a living. Yeah. So uh, this guy, uh, a win like that changes your your entire career. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, welcome to the big leagues. And even with that, like that win, he's like still just outside the top 100. <laughs> even after winning two rounds at a Grand Slam. So, uh, but yes, uh, again, keep your keep your eyes and your uh, ears open uh for him gabriel diallo d-i-a-l-l-o -L -L -O. he's six foot eight i didn't know he was that tall Holy yes shit. six foot eight and uh boy can move mm. for a big guy um like like really move so um he, he's fun to watch well, i'll tell you that um all right that, that that's the <clears throat> sports stuff that's the canadians making his proud stuff right. So I have two related things here, uh, and it goes to Doug Ford. Oof. And, uh. Sir, uh, and it has to do with supervised consumption sites. So last night, uh, Circle K held a promotion where for four hours they dropped the price of gas uh, 10 cents a liter. Is this a stunt to draw more people into their liquor store that Ford Nation has been hard at work promoting for Stephen Harper? Okay, now... Let's compare and contrast to the Ontario government said that the crime rate near the Somerset West safe consumption site is 250% higher than the rest of the city. Neither Ottawa police nor the province could provide any data to back that figure. That's just Doug, okay. Doug pulling stuff out of his arse because here's why. I have um, the data right here in front of me and I'm going to read it to you right now. And Ariel Troster, my, uh, my counselor, actually is, is in this story. Violent crime was down by an average of 6.2% in Somerset Ward between the years 27, 2018 and 2022, 2023, according to crime, tre crime trend statistics from the Ottawa Police Service. This ward also saw a 4.7% drop in the rate of assaults, a 10.3% drop in the rate of sexual assaults, and a 14.5% drop in rates of robbery during the same five years. 
break, a break and enters and possession of stolen goods also dropped significantly during that period. However, other crimes, including drug offenses, weapons offenses, theft under 5,000, fraud, and disturbing the peace were higher. The stats tell a complex, complex picture of a neighborhood that is the most densely populated. This is Centertown, by the way, the neighborhood I live in. It's the most densely populated, has the highest rates of poverty, and the highest number of rooming houses in the city. This is from Somerset Ward Councillor Ariel Troster. Many of its residents, she said, have been rocked by the drug crisis and hard hit by inflation and the cost of groceries. Tro Troster questions the use of crime stats to justify closing the Somerset West supervised consumption site. Minister of Health Sylvia Jones pointed to crime rates when she recently announced her government would shut down 10 of 17 supervised consumption sites, including the one at Somerset West, Somerset West by next March as part of a shift to more treatment and housing to address the toxic drug crisis. Somerset and nine other supervised consumption sites were targeted to be closed because of their proximity to schools or daycares. Jones said the crime rate near the Somerset West Community Center is 250% higher than the rest of the city. Ottawa police were unable to provide the citizen with any data backing this figure in Somerset Ward, stating it would have to be obtained via an access to information request. When the citizen asked the province for more information about the figure, including where the data came from, a spokesperson said the member speaks for itself. But Somerset Ward Councillor Ariel Troster disagrees. It is unclear where that figure comes from, and it is difficult to get granular information about crime rates in a small portion of the ward. She also said it is misleading for officials to imply that the supervised consumption state plays a key role in those numbers. I don't know where that number comes from, she said. I see no indication of a clean line between supervised consumption sites and crime. The evidence doesn't back it up. So Doug just feels things and makes policy on feelings. Not facts or data, feelings. We should not be governed by somebody who does things on their feelings. We have experts who do research and provide hard data on things of this nature. That is how you find out how to set a policy. Not because you feel something. This is just... So he's, you know, he's shutting down a safe consumption site because he says the crime rate is higher when there's nothing to back that statement up. Meanwhile, last night, for four hours, gas was 10 cents a liter cheaper. So you can come on in and check out our new Circle K beverage dispenser location a safe consumption site mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, the last little bit of political news that would probably hit any radars is not from canada but from the united states because last night on cnn uh, Democrat nominee Kamala Harris finally did the thing that Republicans have been begging her to do uh -huh. for the last five to six weeks, which is have an interview with the press unscripted. And of course, as is pretty much always the case for one of the first interviews, if not the first after accepting the nomination, the nominee shows up with their vice presidential pick. Apparently, this time that was a, well, being pre-framed by all the negative people who never have anything nice to say about anybody as being her needing a, her crutch there. Um, not sure how um, the person being picked as your vice presidential candidate when you yourself have actually done the job of being vice president is a crutch, especially one that you would pick. I mean, had she gone in with former President Obama, maybe. Mm. Perhaps. But, um, but someone who hasn't done the job yet. So, yeah, apparently when a woman does it uh, the same way as a man has done it, there's something wrong with it. So, uh, Putting aside the people who cry for no reason or who will cry anyway, regardless of the reason, um, uh, the interview took place. I watched it. Uh, wasn't as hard hitting as hard hitting as I thought it would be in one sense because CNN is developing quite a reputation since it's been taken over by other corporate interests uh, for seeming to really want. Um, uh, 
making a push for the Fox News voter. Not right. the one that's all the way to the right, but the one that's sort of like a little in the middle, seeing if they can try to get them back by having a uh, some slightly foxier content. So showing, sh- showing leg up to the mid-calf rather than up to the full side thigh, upper thigh, like all those um, female, almost all blonde, newscasters on mm-hmm. Fox News do when they're sitting on the sofas and they see where their uh, dress ends. Right. And uh, it's always very, 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 very high. DEI hires, perhaps? <laughs> <laughs> Except so, there's, no, there's no diversity in there. Yes. There's, there's, there's only so much diversity in thigh. Mm-hmm. Uh, in upper thigh. Uh I'm sorry. I just as, yeah, a, yeah, yeah. as a gay beaver, you know, I, I've seen a lot of drag queens, and a lot of drag queens like to wear their dresses really high. And like, there's some drag queens that are, that are they watch Fox News and they blush. Well, last night it's I like, was... girl, if you like smidge one inch on that sofa, the entire world's your gynecologist. <laughs> it's like I, I understand why you're not moving. Last night I was walking home from the grocery store and an in, in, individual was walking towards me and I was kind of like, at first I was like, huh? Oh, okay, whatever. Had a, a like a, a cloak on, but it was wide open. Had a pink bustier with the bustier part cut out so the breasts were completely hanging out. Mm. Uh, and and uh, high heels. Now this uh, person, I would say, presented male. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, had a short gray cropped hair, uh, strong jawline, gigantic Adam's apple, very masculine looking individual, but was wearing uh, like a pink teddy, actually a teddy, but the, the bra portion cut out. So the, the, their breasts, pecs, I don't know what you want to call it, were completely exposed. And I'm kind of like, is it, like, I don't, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. Not breaking any laws, not doing anything wrong. Just walking down the street. And I'm like, is this, provocative or like, I don't understand. I don't care. I'm just kind of like, eh, whatever. Funny thing was that everybody that this person walked by didn't pay them any attention whatsoever. <laughs> it's kind of like, yeah, whatever, who cares? And, and that's my take on who cares. your freak flag fly. Yeah, whatever, man. You're not breaking any laws. I'm just kind of like, well, it, it was like a sort of a first split second. I'm, oh, okay, yeah, whatever. Well, yeah, it's something we're not used to seeing. Exactly. It's, it still happens to me when I see a same-sex couple holding hands. Yeah, because it, it's still relatively new when people... And I'm bad for the other team, but it's not like I watched it and I like, did, did I just see that? Yeah. yeah. You go. Yeah. Right on. Like yeah. this, but I the, every now and then it's like, oh, yay. Yeah. Well, it's because again... <laughs> right on it's, sisters, right on brothers. It's relatively new to us. It's still relatively new. Those of us who are of a certain age group, it's new. And we support it. It's just, it's still I kind of... I do it little, myself. It's a little bit of a jarring thing sometimes. Yeah, I it's, do it it's something we're not used to seeing. Yeah. Something we should get used to seeing and something that I hope, well, hell, Gen Z, pff, nothing. They, yeah. they, what? Oh, they won't even notice. But it's, it's, still like not literally. Some, it's still not something I see every day. No, no, you don't. I, I could no. easily say I, say I see it easily once a week or not walking down the city like a same-sex couple holding hands. But it's still not something that's as common as that I see it every day. No, no, you, it's correct. I don't see it every day either. Yeah. Yeah. So I have one little tidbit here, which I thought is interesting, um, from at Don Lou 87. Why is more attention given to Kamala Harris's connection to McDonald's than Donald Trump's connection to Jeffrey Epstein in Project 2025? Because mm. yes. uh, apparently she left out on her resume that she had worked at McDonald's when she was a teenager. I'm yes. like, uh, okay, so why is that a big deal? Uh, uh, because apparently most people this... are saying, just why would you put that on your resume if you're, you know, in your 50s, why would you include that you worked at McDonald's 40 years ago? Well, you know, for anyone who's wondering, uh, you know, my glorious uh, one-month stint at Arby's um, disappeared from my resume pretty much as soon as I had enough other stuff that yeah. made it such that I didn't have to put it on. And uh, for those who are uh, wondering as well, um, even though I've been acting ever since I was about 10, um, that first uh, play I did in grade five is no longer in my right. resume. No. no, absolutely not. The same. Yeah. Yes. I mean, I don't put it on my resume to prove that I've been doing it for 40 years. I 
I, I can just say I've been doing it for 40 years and hopefully my audition will show that I've been doing it for at least 15. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Actually, Jay's comment here, I think is kind of cute. He says, they're called breasts and your mom had them. You're right. My mom did have them. Oh, and she oh. had to have a double mastectomy. Yeah, it's... <sighs> You just couldn't let it stand, could you? I, I had to. I had to. <laughs> just, I had to. You really had to put the emphasis on had, didn't you? Yeah, well, <laughs> it's, 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 it's grammatically correct. I know. I know. Uh, doing a show with someone. Well, it, 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 you see, I mean, boring. It, but I don't refer to this as, as breasts on myself. I refer to these as pectoral muscles or my chest. I, and, and everybody wants to use a different terminology. That's fine. I have no issues with that whatsoever. That's why I said, I, I don't know the individual I saw last night. I don't know if they would call them breasts or if they would call them pecs. I don't know breasts. because I don't know how that person identifies. I don't know. So, you know, I'm trying to be, I, I wouldn't say politically correct as, as just simply polite. I don't know how that person identifies and I don't know what they would like to call their chest. Breasts or pecs. I don't know. So I'm trying to be the least bit offensive as I can. I'm still a fan of breastesses. This one from Mr. Jim is good. Yes. My friend has a t-shirt that says, yes, they're fake. My real ones tried to kill me. <laughs> I, I, I should have got that t-shirt printed and handed out to a bunch of women who I know would proudly wear it. <laughs> <laughs> no, these are my new ones. The other breasts tried to kill me. I yes, like that. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do indeed, sir. We have a show. All right, kids and cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you love listening to us because we love making this for you. Remember, sharing is caring and word of mouth is priceless. So please tell your peeps all about us. And uh, Kit Saucy says here, pecs are the muscle, breast is the white structure. And remember, men should also check their breasts for lumps. Uh, okay. It does happen. Here breast cancer is a thing in men. There we go. We can check me for lumps. Yep, there we go. See, so it gets saucy right on time. They are breasts. Men can get breast cancer. Do not diminish the breast. Well, it wasn't so, doing that. You are correct. No, you are correct. You I just that. don't know how people like to refer to them as all. That's it. Yep. That's that's it. That's all. I just don't, you know, I don't want to harm anybody ever. Yes. All right. Uh, oh, yes, Kits, 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 already. I tell you, it was a slow, it was a very, very slow news day. Yeah, <laughs> so not our, not our usual Friday show. Uh, and we were kind of stretching there at the end <laughs> to fill in some still content. Uh, just, just to spend more time with you because we love you so much, damn fam. Um, Sharon is caring. So tell your peeps and poops all about us, kids and cubs. If you would like to um, encourage us, well, then you can do so by going to our pod page and you can do that thanks to uh, the ray girl who has sponsored it if you scan the qr code that mr grizzly is going to make appear right under my chin no not that one there we go that's the one that will bring you to our pod page podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver uh lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words and when you click on subscribe there uh, when we have something fresh off the bandwidth, it comes directly to you. So there you go. Now, if you would like to help us out in other ways, then you need to make like Kit Elaine and have a beyond awesome day. But uh, before you do, surf on down to the True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube page. And there we have three buttons waiting for you, Kits and Cubs. And I believe that uh, there is some news about our page, Mr. Grizzly. Yeah. Because um, I saw the look in your eyes, which prompted me to go look as well. So yesterday morning when I woke up, as we began the show, I, I just sat down and I looked at the computer and said, subscribers, 7,000. I'm like, 7,000? How the hell is that? Oh, right. There's a promotion I'm running. And as it turned out, the promotion um, video, which has garnered uh, 345,000 impressions, uh, yeah, we picked up. A, a lot of new subscribers uh, between two of them. Uh, there's promotion and then there's the ads. The, they're different things. And we're just trying to grow the channel. So yesterday it was at 7,000 
three when I woke up. And currently, as of this moment, it's 8,062. So thank you to every single one of you for uh, joining, for subscribing. Uh, feel free to join and become a member if you like. And if you do so, there will, will be, we will be issuing additional content for, the, uh, for that level of membership only. Uh, there's loyalty and then there's VIP and then there's executive. I think that's what they are. There's three levels, three tiers. Uh, but they start at three ninety nine per month. And you can get additional content there. And we will be releasing, uh, recording and releasing more additional content as each day goes by. We probably will do some a little bit, a little bit after we sign off this morning if, if Mr. Uh, Beaver's uh, schedule permits because I've got another 30 or minutes or so so maybe we can create some content for the kids and cubs who have uh, joined the loyalty uh, membership tier all right all right oh yeah and I did forget to mention when we were talking about the Paralympics that our, our goalball team uh, won uh, the first match women's goalball team 10-0 uh, against France, our sitting uh, women's sitting volleyball team won its first match as well in straight sets, 3-0. Uh, our women's wheelchair basketball team lost to China by five points, uh, so it was a very close match. And I believe our men's wheelchair rugby team lost to the United States, uh, but again, it was like fewer than 10 points. Uh, so uh, both very close matches, and uh, those are not just single elimination matches. They're in pool play first, so there'll be other matches uh, to watch. But uh, yes, if you do have some opportunity to check out any of that, the goalball, the sitting volleyball, or what, uh, they're the, no less exciting than any other sports. So please uh, take some time uh, to check in. It seems that uh, ratings uh, so far are pretty good. So, and uh, seat sales at the stadium too uh, in France are pretty good. Uh, I think they have over, over 2 million t tickets sold so far uh, for events, nice. which is, uh, it, 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 like I said, it's, it's finally getting there. It's getting to that stage where people are actually uh, grown some affection and uh, for the, the sports that are unique to these uh, games or slightly adapted. And uh, um, Sports are sports, man. If you're a sports freak, you're a sports freak. It doesn't matter. Period. Yeah. It really doesn't. Competition's competition. So, um, yes, please do uh, keep your eyes open up for that. And, of course, we will be bringing you results uh, every uh, every day. And uh, some of the members of our Bacha team were, were playing as well uh, yesterday. Uh, combination. Uh, I think they're also in pool play within some divisions. So uh, a few lost, a few won, um, but uh, yeah, we'll see what happens uh, from the rest of the games. Okay, uh, I believe I did, yes, we did the YouTube stuff. And the other way that you can help us, Kids and Cubs, is if you make your way down to our coffee page, and that is where you will find our tip jar. Now that's coffee, ko-fi.com slash eager beaver, lowercase letters, all in one word, or if you scan the QR code that is by Mr. Grizzly's head there, that will bring you right there. And uh, we would like to thank um, Kit Wendy, who uh, yesterday sent us a little something with uh, some kind words. Appreciate you, gents, very much. Thanks for keeping it real. Best Canadian news pod going. Cheers. Wow, well, thank you. Yes. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate that. Kit Saucy, I would love to see Ryan and Douglas have a good chat. Oh, what about? Ryan. Let us know. Yeah, Ryan. Ryan. Mr. Otto. Ryan. Oh, Ryan. Ryan. Sorry, I'm blanked out right now. Yeah. I haven't that's, seen that. That's some bonus content that we, that we can do. Yeah. Yeah, we can do something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So we can arrange. Yeah, we can do that. Okay. Uh, Mr. Grizzly. Uh, well, because democracy is something that you do. Very, very, very important. Um, uh, Frank Dominic is going to have a series of videos coming out because he decided to go to a safe consumption site mm -hmm. and uh, talk to some people. And uh, he presented a first uh, video today where he doesn't go in yet. He's, he shows himself going there and coming coming out from it. And, uh, you know, so impressions going in, impressions coming out, and lets us know that he's going to, uh, have some other stuff for us. I'm not sure uh, how much he'll be able to show us of what's mm -hmm. going on inside. You know, well, that, you that probably show a stuff. lot if you blank people's faces out. And yeah, exactly. Names or... Exactly. There might be some 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 rules to do that. Uh, but yes, absolutely, 
Absolutely. Oh, oh Kitsasi goes to another Ryan, Ryan Sheed, but also Ryan Lindley would be good for content too. I do not know Ryan Sheed, actually. I'll have to look them up. Or Shed. I don't know who that person yeah. is. Yeah, I will have to look that look that up. Um, but thanks for the the recommendation. I, I will look it up. Uh, so yes, um, you know, uh, make keep your eyes open for that so that we can uh, learn more. If you're in Ontario, please write to your local MPP, particularly if they happen to be conservative, and let them know that uh, uh, no policy decisions based on feelings, please. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> check out the evidence and whatnot like this. You can still come from your ideological perspective, but please do it factoring in the evidence, please, not just what you feel. We, we, we don't pay you for that. I got a feeling. No, let's not govern by feelings, please. No, we, we, don't, we don't pay you for that. Okay. We, we give you the budgets and whatnot like this so that you can have access to the best information possible to make the best decisions possible based on that evidence. So please don't, don't do government by feelings. We, we, we don't want that. Nobody wants that. Okay. All right. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Well, well, um, you're probably, sorry, I got sounds going off in the background here. I'm trying to to isolate or, or sorry, silence mute while I'm trying to come up with a clear, concise thought for you folks today. And to be honest with you, I, I'm, I'm kind of blanked out because when allergies hit hard, like they have been, it's difficult for me to, uh, to concentrate on anything other than the fact that I, I, the thing that I concentrate on the most right now, and this is the honest to goodness truth is don't be an asshole to people just because you're suffering. Mm. You're suffering, so keep your suffering internally. You don't need to share it with other people. You can say, sorry, my allergies are really troubling me. If they say, you know, your behavior is a little bit off or your mood is a little bit off. Look, you can do whatever you want. How I choose to act is in this manner. I keep it within because I don't feel the need to rain on somebody else's parade just because it's raining on mine. I, I can take the rain on my own. And I will try and be as pleasant and as upbeat and as positive as possible around everybody I meet and encounter on a daily basis because my struggle should not be yours. That's a personal insight. That's a personal viewpoint. If you choose to do the same, great. And if you don't, that's fine too. How you choose to act is entirely up to you. But my daily, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Motto. My daily, I wanted to say memo, but I knew that wasn't correct. My daily motto is usually... Keep it to yourself if it's going to harm others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, kids and cubs, it could be a tough world out there, so please be kind to and gentle with yourself. Mr. Grizzly, cue the cock, and we'll be back. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors. The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. All right. Uh, just a quick Easter egg because I just saw in the chat that uh, uh, Kit Saucy was wishing to Kit Cassie best of luck to the cowboy and you and your new job. So there you go. That's something to celebrate. Hope that everything's going very well. And uh, for the uh, entire family, Mohan, Miss Shadika, Mateo, Rain, and Jazzy, who I was uh, listening to a, a previous show because I was writing an episode description, and I had meant to say Jazzy once at, uh, at one point referring to Jazzy and said Jay-Z instead. So I'm so sorry. <laughs> Big difference. I know, just, uh, my mouth went faster than my brain when I re-listened to it. I said, like, ooh, 
Gee, I I I, I screwed up her name, <laughs> which is not really a nice thing to do. Happens, so I'm so sorry for having done that. Uh, but uh, there was a birthday at the household yesterday. So um, happy birthday, fifteen. Happy birthday. I hope it was fabulous. I have one quick 23 second clip that will probably enrage you. How many people have received that? How many? 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 You don't want to answer either. Can I respond? I can't answer if you keep interrupting me. Wasn't he asking how many and then says, I can't answer if you keep interrupting me? Wasn't he interrupting their question with combien, 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 and then not getting an answer claiming that he was being interrupted? And since when do politicians interview reporters? Obnoxious <sighs> a-hole. What a dick. <sighs> oh, why did we have to end on that? Well, you know, ah, I, gotta, I gotta do something, man. Ricky. <laughs> All right, everyone, have a beaverific weekend. Okay, I'll end it with this instead. Oh, okay. I'll put this on the. This is uh, two humble people. When I get pulled over by a cop, I think, oh, what did I do? Jerk, I'll have to pay. I was speeding. This sucks. I'm gonna be late. Not once ever in my life have I thought, this is how I'll die. That, friend, is white privilege. So that's yep. your thought for today. There you go. All right. Bye, everyone. I'll see you. <laughs>